<laughs> Come, <laughs> follow me. It's quite hard to keep up with Stefan yeah. Kalmar. His tour went through the working parts Hi. of the building. You know, this is uh, the heart of it all, the kitchen, <laughs> you know. The work in progress parts. You keep your ladders in the stairwell. Yeah. Uh, and parts looking out. Bright minds of the future down yeah. there, Stefan. Going to Buckingham Palace now. <laughs> Wrong direction. Come here. <laughs> he took over a year ago, and tonight he launches his first programme of events, mindful of the original ethos. The ICA was a radical place when it opened in 1947. Anti-establishment, one of its founders, an anarchist. It put on pop art and punk. Then it moved here to the Mall in 1968. And there's a sense now that it's being stripped back to those roots. So, as it was designed originally by architect Jane Drew, the windows onto the street have been uncovered downstairs, as has the original ceiling. In the centre, this will be a cafe open until 2am, because, as Stefan says, all the good ideas happen over drinks at midnight. I pretty much would like to see the ICA becoming, again, uh, that social space that is not just an institution, it's an organisation. It's not just a space, but it's also a place, a place in people's mind, but also a physical place for people to go. And while there, see experimental, challenging works befitting its 70-year-long reputation. At the Institute of Contemporary Art, an exhibition of collage certainly sets people thinking. In the 2009 recession, financial difficulties threatened its closure. It lost its slightly edge and relevance. Uh, and I like that challenge. I mean, I like a challenge, but I like that challenge uh, particular to bring the ICA back into focus, uh, into releasing its full possibilities that it has, that it holds here with uh, two cinemas, three galleries and one theatre. In the heart of the establishment... You see uh, Buckingham Palace there, that's a backdoor of... Uh, number 11 and 10. Stefan hopes to be a little free-thinking thorn. Wendy Hurrell, BBC London News.